Well, hi, y'all. Welcome back to Mr. Riley's Neighborhood. I'm sure glad you could make it today. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the A-Side. I am, of course, your ever-esteemed host, Riley. And today, I have another AJR video. I know, but it's fun. Um, even if I don't enjoy their music, I have fun listening to it and experiencing it with you guys. And I thought, hey, we've done two out of the four AJR albums. I've heard Neo Theater a couple of times already, so I might as well just polish off the last two albums. So I'm going to be reviewing um, their first album, Living Room, and reacting to it uh, today. And after that, I'm going to review Neo Theater uh, in a more, um, you know, formal review. And the AJR series will be done. I figured we're halfway there. We might as well finish it off. Um, because consistency. So today, we are going to be listening to their first album, Living Room. Which a lot of AJR fans consider to be their weakest album. So maybe I'll end up enjoying it. Now, once again, I'm going to be going into this with an open mind. While I don't enjoy this band particularly from what I've heard, I do think I like them just a little more than other people do. I'm always willing to give anything a fair shot. Um, while I didn't like the Click or uh, OK Orchestra, there were both a couple of tracks on each album I liked. I liked My Play and um, Christmas in June off of OK Overture and then Sober Up um, on the Click. Um, and we don't talk about Neo Theater. Um, we'll get there eventually. Anyway, let's just do this. And make sure before we get started you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. We're getting up there. 104, so make sure you subscribe, and uh, let's get into it. First track, Overture. Now, this is something they've done twice before. I guess twice after. This is something we've heard before. I don't think it worked particularly well either time. Uh, I think the Overture on The Click worked better than OK Overture on OK Orchestra, um, but I don't think either of them particularly worked very well. But let's see what Living Room has to offer. I'm hoping for something a little more stripped back with this album. So, let's see if we get it. Okay. Wow. That's actually kind of a pretty piano. This is actually pretty. And it's not like overproduced to hell. This actually sounds good. Stop the fucking presses. Even the pitch shifting and vocal effects aren't terrible here. The production seems so more stripped back so far. I don't hate this. By any means. I don't think it's amazing, but this is... This is alright. Okay. Okay, I see you, Matt Brothers. I know so much about AJR now. What the fuck was that? I hope there's no yodeling on this album. Wow. So no one ever talks about this album, but if what I'm hearing off of this is to be correct, it seems that what I've been saying this whole time is that there is a good band within AJR when they find themselves stripping back and doing less. Um, like on Sober Up, the production wasn't all this shit thrown so loud, all overblown and overproduced to hell. I mean, this song is still pretty produced and pretty like glitzy, but not even close to those albums. 
I think it sounded pretty good, honestly. So here's going to be my rating scale. Pretty simple this time. Red folder if it's bad, green folder if it's good, and if it's meh, I'm going to give it the ever classic black GameCube controller. I'm going to give Overture the green folder. I really enjoyed that. The strings were genuinely pretty. The piano was pretty. It wasn't filtered in so many effects. It wasn't overblown. There were no clusterfucks of electronics and all these sounds. Um, I thought that was just a fairly pretty track, and hopefully the rest of the album kind of lives up to that, because we might be in store for something pretty solid here, guys. Anyway, I'm excited, actually. Let's continue to the next track, Infinity, and see if it lives up to that what that first track was promising. I'm gonna be a stutter idiot on my, aren't I? Holy shit! An acoustic guitar! An instrument you can make out! Wow! Wait a minute, okay. So this band has garnered a lot, a lot of comparisons to 21 Pilots, and I've definitely pointed it out, and I've definitely poked fun at it, but... That is Tyler Joseph. That doesn't even sound like Jack Matt. That sounds like fucking Tyler Joseph singing on this track. Immediately, I'm like, that's Tyler Joseph, to a T. But that might not necessarily be a bad thing, so let's continue. He sounds sounds so much like regional at best era Tyler Joseph. That's not a bad work. Like a really like mid 2000s like indie sound. Wow. This seems so genuine, and the instrumentation is pretty good. I mean, the mixing is a little rough, but honestly. Is that another vocalist? Those are some really nice harmonies, actually. What the fuck, man? It's a sweet love song, maybe a little basic lyrically here and thematically, but it's sweet. And it's not cringy either. Like, so much of AJR's, like, lyrics and stuff are, like, so cringy and, like, soulless. Uh, and this just feels pretty genuine, even if it's a little bland. And sonically here, there are no, like, electronics or anything clustering everything up. I can pick out strings and the drums and the acoustic guitars. The mixing is pretty rough, but they made this album in their living room, hence the name, Living Room. And I like that it seems that the three brothers here are alternating vocals, at least on this track, rather than it mainly being Jack, if I'm correct, Jack is the word singer. Uh, and I like that. It adds a little bit of uh, dynamic to this track. Like I said, it's a little basic, but it's very enjoyable. It almost makes me kind of nostalgic, reminding me of like that mid early 2010s, kind of like indie boom when you had all those bands and songs kind of blowing up at the time. Like, starting around 2013, going to, like, 2015-ish, like, that era. Like, something I would've heard late elementary school, early middle school. Wow. I'm gonna give Infinity 
The Green Folder. I really liked that song. It was basic, but it sounded pretty nice, despite some rough mixing. The, it wasn't overproduced, for sure. There weren't all these stupid electronics and stuff just clogging everything up. Uh, the lyrics, once again, were a little basic, but still pretty sweet, talking about how he wants to kind of share infinity with this girl and wants to have a dance with her and, you know... Mama's had to pick the right one, and I think you're it. That's a pretty sweet lyric. I mean, cross my heart and hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, or whatever that lyric was. A little over-edgy and a little dramatic, but that's just kind of nitpicks overall, because I think this track is pretty okay. It's AJR has talent, and I've been saying this since I made that click reaction, is that AJR is a band that has talent, is just masked by awful production, awful ideas, and, and and really selling out. But here they strip themselves back and are, are more genuine. While they seem a little bland, maybe compared to, like, The Click, you would definitely know The Click is AJR. I mean, that's definitely their kind of defining statement. I think this album is, is much superior, so far at least, um, just by these first two tracks. Um, maybe they're not as unique, but I think the quality is much higher than it was there, at least so far. Uh, I'm Ready is a pretty infamous song, so we'll see what we have with this next track. Now, I know about this song, okay? I've heard some people talk about it. Of course, the Spongebob reference. I know it sampled Spongebob. I like me some Spongebob. I grew up on it. Let's see what I'm Ready has to offer. Will it live up to the first two songs? Let's see. Uh-oh. Okay, it's cute, but I can see this being very obnoxious in repeated listens. Huh. So, so... This song has some electronics to it, but once again, it's not like the click, which is so loud and overbearing. I mean, this is pretty loud, um, but... I don't know, I just don't hate this as much so far. It's not as overproduced and overstuffed and overblown as it seems to have been earlier. Like, I can actually, like, pull out pianos. I don't... The vocals here, you know, I do think he improved as a vocalist, for sure, um, on further albums. But, I don't know, I'm pausing and talking a lot. I just feel like I have so much to say after this whole journey. It's bouncy. It's got a pretty good rhythm to it. Huh. Once again, that's a little bland. Uh, a little... That's annoying. Ready what you're thinking when the bass starts ringing? And the melody is here. Ooh, but that is a good bass line. It's got like a reggae-ish vibe to it. That sounds awful. Oh boy, dubstep! But do the goods outweigh the bad on this song? That is the question. See, I think that's a pretty cliched line. Something like that's been done a million times. That being said, this band is not a lyrical masterpiece by any means. They wrote Beats by Dre. This is far better. See, the melody here and the lyrics are obnoxious, but that bass line is really nice. Like, it's a pretty decent bass line. But that electric build-up sounds so bad. Wub, 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 wub. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about these electronics. What year did this album come out? 2013! Wow! All of a sudden, things make a lot more sense. 
this is very much an album of its ear. With the like kinda indie folk pop thing going on, and then these dubstep beats here. Did I nail it on the head or what? Okay, it's funny. I'll give it to them. That's funny. It's cute. I I, I like the SpongeBob sample a lot. I will give it to AJR. That's pretty funny. song I found really obnoxious, but I just, that stupid Spongebob sample just put such a smile on my face, and uh, I think I'm still going to give it the black GameCube controller for the stuff I didn't like, <clears throat> like some of the dubstep stuff, that build up of electronics until we got to the I'm Ready, but at that end there where they like, like the bass dropped and it like chopped up the Spongebob sample, <laughs> it was funny. And it worked, and it was cute, but I don't know if the rest of the song... I don't know. The bads don't necessarily outweigh the good, but the good doesn't outweigh the bad. So I'm left to just kind of give it a meh. But overall, three tracks in, this is way better than the other three AJR albums. Alright, so far we're not doing too bad. Track four, My Calling. I hope that vocal manipulation does not last out the same. A drainer? I don't care about anything, you know I'm a drainer. I can hear the Disney influence on here for sure. Or especially the hoo ha hoo ha reminds me of like one. So I hear it. It's a little on the nose though. This is just so much less cringeworthy than anything they've done afterward that I can't help but not hate it. The vocal manipulation is really obnoxious. Not as obnoxious as it was in the click, but still pretty obnoxious. The rest of the song, not doing too bad though. The electronics are bright and the synths sound good. Maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome from listening to so much of this band. Breaking a hundred red balloons from off the floor. Obvious Disney reference. This is a really power, not powerful, but energetic chorus. It really fills you with the positive energy that they want you to have. And it's like, you know, rising to your calling and following what you need to do. And I think this chorus is doing a really good job of kind of insinuating that and, and uh, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, portraying that, um, accentuating, really accentuates that point. Holy shit, we're only four tracks in, we're already 20 minutes. I just guess I've had a lot to say so far. Okay. It is very theatrical, very Disney-ish, Broadway-ish, and that vocal performance, like, was, da -na 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 -na, wanting more, that's very Broadway-y. And of course, being a theater kid, 
I don't really mind that. I think there's a reason a lot of AJ and Naysayers don't ever talk about this album. Because it's pretty decent. And the reason I think a lot of AJR fans don't talk about this album is it's because not really what they go to AJR for. It's not really what I would think of when I would think of AJR. I mean, it had some kind of AJRisms. Like, I thought the, you know, pitch shifting was obnoxious and the hoo, ha, hoo, trying to be Disney-ish, like Mulan. Uh, also, kind of cheesy and obnoxious. But I can see why I never hear anything about this album. Um, but those are the reasons why I'm pretty much enjoying it. I'm going to give my calling the green folder. I mean, I am by no means an AJR fan. I rather hate this band, I'm going to be honest. Um, not to spoil my Neo Theater review, but I think it's one of the worst albums I've ever heard. Um, and I don't think the click is very good either. And OK Orchestra is easily the worst of the albums I've listened to released in 2021. But I don't know. I don't hate this. As you can tell, I'm... You know, I don't think it's amazing, but I'm enjoying it. I liked the hook on this song. I liked the chorus. It felt very kind of triumphant and rising to the occasion of, you know, your calling and doing what you want to love and or doing what you love and what you want to do, knowing it's your calling and you have to be there. And some of, like, the performances were very Broadway-esque and theatrical, but not in, like, a cringeworthy way, like, in a way that really kind of brought out the emotion. I don't know. What do you guys think of this album? Let me know. Both AJR are fans and haters if you've heard it. What do you think? Alright, bros. And gals. Track 5. <clears throat> Thirsty. That's garbage! Wow! Y'all dropped the ball fast on that one. The... Oh my god. The pitch-shifting yodeling with auto-tune and... Oh my. That is terrible. One of the most ill-conceived things I've heard, and I've heard a lot of pretty ill-conceived things. Um, wah. And the, like, like, saxophones and horns trying to make it sound like a, like a party song, or like a club banger. I don't even know. Like a, like a 20s club banger? Like we're flappers now? Um, that's a historical term. Look it up, kids. Um... <laughs> you all dropped the ball on this one. Um, I'm only like 28 seconds in, but I don't really want to listen to the rest of this. The drum machines here don't sound great either. So this, this is what I don't like about AJR. You have all these, like quirky jazz instruments and like oh look we're being so cool we have pitch shifted yodel like no one else would do that and we've got all these like saxophones and trumpets and trombones and stuff look at us being so quirky ah uh and it comes off as so obnoxious um it's like those kids who try way too hard that you really cannot stand um tumblr kids honestly is kind of what this reminded me of a bit um you're like oh i'm so quirky tumblr kids um Boy, this is bad. Like, really bad. And then when it all layers on top of each other, it's so loud, and it just sounds like such a mess. This is a precursor to, like, what The Click and Neo Theater, and, and, and even to an extent, okay, orchestra, what those albums would be. Let's continue. Ah. We are young. Oh, boy. Ugh! That sounds awful. That's like a drinking anthem. Me and the boys, we're thirsty, we're gonna get fucking turnt! Someone get me a pimp cup. 
This is cringe. I think Jacob Satorius can do better than this. Have you heard Sweatshirt? It ain't this bad. Only 2016 kids will remember that one. That's an awful year. We are young, but we can make it rain. Because we are young is like, I mean, obviously fun was around this time. So they definitely heard fun and thought, ah, that! Uh, and it's really obvious. This does not work for me, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Why? Why do they need to throw this song on here? In, in the middle of a pretty, like, emotional album so far, it just doesn't make sense. So, we'll talk about this in a minute when the song is done. I mean, to be fair, in their defense, this album is called Living Room because they made it in their living room. They didn't have, like, major label producers and stuff behind them like they do later on. I guess. I don't know. There weren't as many people to check them. Okay, so let's talk about the sequencing of this album real quick and why this song doesn't belong at all. Thirsty is a drinking party anthem about getting turnt with the boys at a party and being all lit and shit, and it came off really cringeworthy with lyrics like, we are young, so make it rain, and the thirsty, thirsty, thirsty with the auto-tune, uh, and of course the pitch-shifting yodeling and all the other clusterfuck bullshit that made that sound awful. But following up Infinity, which is a song about a lover you want to spend the rest of time with, a very sweet one, I'm ready, you know, basically being a ready to face the world and start your day and start your life and my calling which is a song about following your heart and doing what you need to do all three pretty emotional kind of coming of age songs and then it's i mean the boys getting turned you know cracking up a cold one with the boys on saturday why yeah. why anyway this next track is called pitchfork kids which i'm sure they're referring to the um music publication pitchfork and with a title like Pitchfork Kids, I know it's going to be cringeworthy. And this album was doing so good! Oh boy, let's, let's, let's do this. Oh wait, I have to give Thirsty a... Do I even have to? You know, it, it fucking sucked. It was bad. Come on. Come on. Let's continue. Pitchfork Kids. Okay, this band's credit. That's pretty menacing. Much to AJR's credit here, this is the first time I've heard their pitch shifting and, like, kind of vocal manipulation. That it worked? Uh, assuming this is going to be a song that fits that vibe. They take these, like, kind of... Renaissance-ish kind of operatic choral vocals... And then, like, pitch shift it down to make it sound, like, very creepy and dark. And it just feels so menacing. And I think that actually worked in a way. Um, so, yeah. And it seems to be maybe a guitar line. So this is definitely trying to take on a darker aesthetic. Ooh. I really like when this band like switches off vocals actually. Ooh, the organ. Holy shit! This is really good! It's like dark and menacing sounding. And it's not like they're trying to be like so sanitary. They're doing, I mean, it's still pretty poppy and sanitary, but it has a much more kind of dark 
and the menacing vibe to it. Which is something Age of Arab nowadays would never do to even try and be slightly dark or edgy. And I don't want to call this edgy by any means. Marilyn Manson, this is not. But it's probably the darkest sounding thing they've done. And I think that's cool. It's got the organ and the strip back here. And it switches off the vocalists, and I really like that. Okay, okay, I hear you, Jack. Oh, vocals there are great. And the only there, the oh, kind of sounds like the JoJo theme song, just a little bit. At least I'm getting that, and I think that's kind of funny. And I only know the JoJo theme song from memes. Okay, I don't love that, but I don't think it's gonna ruin what I heard beforehand, unless some fuckery happens here in a minute. Ooh! Ooh, the bells! What?! Now, I know, I, I don't want to seem like I'm overreacting or being, like, super hype for no reason, but, like, this is the riskiest thing AJ has ever done, and this almost sounds like... Like, something like The Click would be a debut album, and this would be, like, the follow-up to that. Where, like, you take out all the bullshit and make a good album. But it's the other way around. This is... Might be the best AJR song I've heard, actually. I mean, I'm not paying too much, like, I'm not pulling too much out of the lyricism here. I'm assuming it's, like, against, like, Pitchfork and is, like, criticizing, well, music critics. Which, that's a music critic, and you can take offense to, if you want to call me a music critic. I, I have over 100 subs, so maybe I'm an official music critic now. I don't know, I don't want to seem pretentious. But, I like what this is doing, actually, like, a lot. And it's surprising me, as someone who has hated the other three AJR albums for the fiery passion, all of a sudden they make something really good. And, like, different. And it feels... good. Like, it feels like what AJR would do, but decent. And the bells and the atmosphere of the song. Oh my god. the loneliest life we live. Wow! Okay, that might be the best AJR song ever. I'm giving Pitchfork Kids the green folder. Holy shit. The bar has been set so high for part two, because this is the end of part one. Make sure you subscribe. And, um... Yeah. This has been good so far. It's just a less produce AJR, they feel so less melodramatic and sanitized, and they seem to be taking more risks here, like on Pitchfork Kids and Infinity being my favorite tracks of this album so far. It's just pretty solid indie pop. I'm not complaining. So, yeah. Make sure you subscribe so you can see part two. Follow me on Instagram at the.a.side. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.